Hello, everyone, and thank you to the Chamber of Digital Commerce for inviting me to provide a few remarks today at the DC Blockchain Summit. I'm proud to see how much the Digital Chamber has accomplished, grown, and evolved since 2014, when you were the first and only crypto trade association pounding the pavement to educate Washington, DC on crypto technology. You all have supported my work since I joined Congress in 2015, and I'm grateful for what we've accomplished. And I look forward to the challenges we still have to tackle together. Many of you here know that when I joined Congress eight years ago, a staffer gave me a book that discussed the promises of blockchain and crypto to disintermediate economic and social frameworks and to restore control to the individual. I've come to refer to this, as, this concept as the ownership economy, but eight years ago, I just saw this technology as a solution to the mismanagement of our monetary policy and a restoration of vital American values, privacy, individual sovereignty, and, f and free markets. The United States leadership in the global economy is propelled by our ability to leverage innovations that make markets and communication more efficient. For example, the United States responded to the emergence of the Internet, a decentralized digital infrastructure upon which anything can be built by advancing policies that prioritize these American values of privacy, individual sovereignty, and free markets. As a result, the Internet stands today as an infrastructure that any American can access freely without the permission of public officials, unlocking an abundance of economic activity and opportunity. America remains a technological leader, not because we force innovations to adopt our values under regulatory duress, but because we allow technology that holds these values at their core to flourish. The next phase of the digital economy, the ownership economy, consists of a trusted, immutable mechanism for transferring value in real time over the Internet. Enter crypto a technology that can shift economic power from centralized institutions back into the hands of the people. It's transformational, and it can be threatening to unelected bureaucrats and career uh, politicians here in Washington, D.C. As the federal government seeks to maintain and expand the financial control to which it's grown accustomed, the idea of the central bank digital currency has gained traction within the institutions of power in the United States. As government-controlled, programmable money that can easily be weaponized into a surveillance tool, the very ethos of central bank digital currencies is everything Bitcoin and crypto stands against. It's everything the United States of America stands against. Unlike decentralized cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, CBDCs are a digital form of sovereign currency that are designed and issued by the federal government and transact on a ledger that is controlled by the federal government. In short, a digital dollar, if not designed to emulate cash, could give the federal government not only significant transaction level data down to the individual user, but also the ability to program the CBDC to choke out politically unpopular activity. For this reason, I introduced the CBDC Anti-Surveillance State Act to halt efforts of unelected bureaucrats in Washington, D.C. from issuing a central bank digital currency that strips Americans of their right to financial privacy. Recent actions from the Biden administration make it clear they are not only itching to create a digital dollar, but they're willing to trade Americans' right to financial privacy for a surveillance-style CBDC. We don't make trade-offs with Americans' rights. Through a series of executive order directives focused on CBDC research and development and a mindset that the United States has fallen behind other nations like China in crypto development, our Federal Reserve, the Treasury, White House, and others are frantically working to, in their minds, keep up with our competitors. But nothing could be more dangerous than adhering to a manufactured sense of urgency like this and ultimately developing a CBDC that is not open, permissionless, and private. So, as other countries like China develop CBDCs that fundamentally omit the benefits and protections of cash, it is more important than ever to ensure the United States digital currency policy upholds our American values of privacy, individual sovereignty, and free market competitiveness. The question becomes then, how can we digitally em emulate cash in an increasingly cashless economy? The answer? We must be patient, 
allow private sector uh, opportunities to innovate, and we must learn from the numerous abuses of financial freedom enabled by the digital economy elsewhere in the world. Take, for example, the trucker protests in Ottawa last year. The Canadian government weaponized the banks to freeze its own citizens' bank accounts to, to uh, stop the protests. Another example is China's use of, co of its COVID tracking system to prevent its citizens from accessing funds in their bank accounts. Shifting to a cashless economy is inevitable, but we should never surrender decentralized money. With that, it goes without saying that the challenges behind us and the challenges ahead of us in ensuring the United States welcomes the ownership economy that Bitcoin and crypto unlocks are significant. However, I'm confident that American values will always prevail against the power-hungry whims of unelected bureaucrats. Enshrined with our American values, crypto should be fostered and developed here in the United States, just like the Internet. So the future of our global financial system embodies our values of privacy, individual sovereignty, and free markets, just like the Internet, rather than, obviously, the values of the Chinese Communist Party. I'm grateful for the opportunity again to join all of you today, not just for this summit, but also in our daily fight to capitalize on the enormous opportunity for growth that crypto and blockchain presents. Thanks.